Arvon Home and to the first uh, edition of the new year. So Happy New Year to you all. Uh, and this uh, completes or this video concentrates only on the building of the fire station uh, and the completion of what has turned out to be a quite lengthy uh, scratch build uh, and which from which I've learnt a great deal. But uh, no more from me now. Let's get on to uh, a first clip where I've taken a slideshow to show you the building of the north wing of the fire station uh, and getting us to the point where the fire station has both the north and south wing attached. So here we are with the building as it is so far. Um, you'll have seen from the slideshow the steps that I took to build the south wing, which is this one over here, which was actually fairly straightforward as I described in actually I think the last video. The north wing turned in to be more of a, uh, a build than I realised because as I started constructing each floor, as you'll have seen from the slideshow, I realised that I really needed to construct each floor. And there needed to be an internal corridor for, um, so that as you look in the windows at the side uh, through here you're looking into a corridor and not into an empty carcass so there is um, there's obviously a floor here the, the wall comes here for the front of the building there's no need for anything at the back because at the back there are the, the escape doors um, these here are just empty rooms uh, they can't be seen, you can't see into them. Uh, the front of the, of the property is a different matter. You can see into those rooms and I'll come to that in just a moment. So pretty much everything that I wanted to do, I was able to do. I managed to line up the brick courses. The only thing I discovered was that when I put these two walls onto the centerpiece, I'd done, I'm I'd, I'd obviously getting more used to using this technique for putting in the mortar courses, I'd managed to do that far more effectively on the two wings than I had on the main building. So I did have to go back and redo the main building uh, so that it matched overall, which it now does. Um, wasn't too bad actually. I managed to not put too much paint onto the uh, stone coloured sections and where I did it pretty much rubbed off and I was able to touch it up with, um, without any real problem. Um, so this now uh, is the main part of the building put together and what I'm now working on uh, are the uh, there's some work that I want to do putting coins on the corner of the walls if I oh, take some here you'll have seen these before these are a scale uh, no York model rail kit uh, N gauge they do them in double O gauge as well if you're a double O gauge modeler and they're really useful for being able to put them onto the corner of the building. So that, that will go there, you can see that there. And similarly on every other edge here, um, which will hide the the joins, which in place, actually mostly, they're not that visible, but it will, it will finish them off, and which will be quite nice. Um, then I've got to, and I've started work on doing that, which I'll show you, we've got to fit the roof and fit the internal walls here, so you can see brick course and not just uh, bare plastic and then finally fit the parapet which will run in the way that this one does 
around the whole of the edge and that will then complete the top half of the building leaving just a few things to be done when it's attached to its base which is to fit in the fireman's poles uh, to fit in a step here because um, I, I, this is not as I originally intended I'd originally intended that to be set in a porch with a little window here but actually when I came to start uh, marking that out I was finding myself with very thin pieces of card again and you'll remember one of the reasons I ditched the very first carcass was that the, the spacing for windows and the rest just wasn't working so instead that's just a, a door there which will have a little step in front of it um, and uh, yes fit the lights and then that that will be ready to go on to its base which I'm starting to think about how the how I've designed that and what that will look like um, I mentioned that when I started to fit the roof I needed to fit it in a way that allowed it allows the light that are sitting in these um, this duct to flow in and although my original intention was that the the duct is lower than the side walls it wasn't letting much light in so I have come up with an ingenious solution I've started cutting the pieces for the roof this is the black plastic uh, and I decided in any event I would want to do it in sections partly because I would like the middle bit to be removable in case I, any of these lights go and then I can get in and, and change the lights so I've already cut the these two sections here which provide the, um, the the front and back and that then leaves me with a, a gap and the beauty of that is that I, I've then constructed a slightly raised section for the center which also provides a kind of internal light well so I'll put some reflective stuff on the back to make sure light goes in I've tested it and it does work uh, and the light then flows into the front and the back from those two lamps sitting at the back. The next thing that I need to do now uh, is just to complete the uh, putting something in the centre of, of this section that will slot into the light duct uh, and hold it so that uh, this, this light doesn't leak from underneath. And obviously this has got to be painted up and I've yet to decide what I'm going to put on the black plastic. I think I may use I, um, scale model scenery, do some very interesting texture papers, one of which I think is an asphalt one, and this would likely to be asphalted or felted roof. Maybe not asphalt, anyway, but a felted roof, and I'll see what they've got in the way of, uh, of papers. When I started building this and started looking at how the light flowed, it made me realise that the front of the building um, will be very visible. The back I'm not so worried about because that isn't. I'm just going to take you in here to show you what I found myself building earlier today uh, and I need to put some furniture in the front of the building. Um, if I move forward here what I have now constructed, let's just go up a bit more, tip you in, hooray, is uh, 12 beds. Um, those are going to be painted uh, and probably a little bit of plastic card go in as a pillow um, but that will be visible as a dormitory in the front and I'm just beginning to think that this is going to be uh, a kitchen and dining room in, in the front there uh, and you're going to well I'll show you when I've done it to see if it works uh, make some use of plastic card to create the furniture for there and this over here probably some kind of office so that's cudgeling my mind at the moment um, and that's the next thing to be done. So I'll want to complete doing the roof, uh, complete the inner walls and the parapet uh, and all the furniture for the front. And when I've done that, I'll come back because we will then be ready to move on uh, to think about putting this on a base.
Okay, well, I'm several days uh, from the last bit of recording, um, partly because I've been bending my mind over how to design the base and fit the base, but I think we're, we're pretty much there now. So let me just take you through the work that I've done uh, in the intervening time, as I said I would. Um, the uh, parapet has been fitted on the top, the roof has been fitted. I'll come to the roof detail in just a moment because that was a, a sudden flash of inspiration. I've put the coins on the side of the walls, which finish off the walls and hide all the joins, uh, and have actually squared it up quite nicely. Uh, and that's been done on the front and on the back. And you can see that I've also fitted drain pipes on the back. And these, of course, are sitting over where the two end wings join the main carcass. So they're hiding that join as well. Um, the roof was constructed as I said I would. Uh, so this centre section just simply lifts out, but otherwise it sits on there quite happily um, and is no more than uh, the plastic that I said I would use with some uh, foam board and there's a couple of pieces of plastic in there to give this the right width overall and that slots down uh, into here and completes, if I position it right. The top detail um, came about because I began to think that really I needed to provide uh, an escape route for people upstairs in the event of a fire. Uh, and I saw on PD models that they do a safety ladder and I'll put up a picture of the safety ladder when it's made up. Uh, and the kit has just arrived today, really impressive. Um, I think I ordered it on Christmas Day itself. Uh, and it was made up ready for dispatch on Boxing Day. Uh, today is the 28th of December uh, and it would arrived in the post today all the way from Orkney to Edinburgh. Um, that's the ladder when it arrives uh, and you can see there's the ladder with the railings that will sit up on the top of the, the uh, wall and this is a cage that I need to bend that will then fit around to provide a safety um, as, it come, as people come down the, the ladder escaping from a fire. But I needed something to be where the, where the hatch or something would open. Uh, and it, I also needed right at the very end here, when I put this paper on, I cut it half a millimetre short. So the black um, uh, plastic was visible. Um, so and I've used some, just some simple uh, plastic strip, which is painted uh, just in primer, nothing more which looks now like a walkway. Uh, and these are bits of Lego left over from a kit that I had um, a few years ago. You have actually seen the kit if you go back to a very early uh, uh, episode because it's uh, a Lord of the Rings kit of the Tower of Orthanc, which stands, think about something like two foot high. It was a, took me three days to make it uh, and played to the big kid in me very well. So, um, these are just a couple of pieces that were left over that fitted together, uh, filled in the join so you can't see the join, and then uh, primed up and painted with silver. These are, um, these are just the bits um, without any uh, change to them. They were quite happy like that. And that just gives me a little bit of roof detail. I will look out. There are some kits around for roof detail, and I may get some more, but I want to see because I want it to be right for the, uh, for the period. Um, I fitted the front lights in the end because I might as well and I've put the fireman's pole poles in as, uh, as well. I'm going to try and find a way to fit some bases to all of these things because although they, they sit pretty much flat it just looks odd. I, I would like to have something into which they slot uh, when I fit this down onto the base so that everything is square uh, and doesn't sort of wiggle around because I will need to be able to lift this completely off the base in the event of having to change any of these lights. Uh, and that's presented me with one or two uh, issues when I've been thinking about the base design. Uh, this is the base essentially uh, and it is no more than two millimeter um, Slater's plastic card I think which at the moment has just got some primer on there. Um, it's, li it's likely I shall paint this a darker colour than this, but I'm, I'll just wait and see. Um, 
In the center here, there's going to be some square tiling, which is quite common in fire stations, um, which I've made up again using the Excel spreadsheets um, so that that will sit and look rather different. That kind of tiling is very common because, of course, they wash the engines uh, and that obviously is a better surface on which to have all the water, it would seem. Um, so that will eventually, have, uh, the piece of the right size will be cut and put in here. These two, let's bring them in, these two lugs are, are bits of old I-beam. Merely because when I sit this down on the layout, I don't want, if it were not, for it to go scudding along, given that there are wires going through the boards that might get uh, pulled. So the building just sits down on top of those lugs, and that positions this in the same position every time it goes on. So that's good. That gives me my, um, that just holds it in place and I, and I don't need to worry about things moving. If I do what I want to do on the bases here, they will also give me uh, places into which those rods will sit. So everything will be in exactly the same place when I put it back on uh, in the event of having to change any lights. Um, the lighting uh, is going to be done in a way which means that I can, I can lift this off and lift the base up. Um, because underneath the cables coming out from the uh, model are going to be soldered onto this copper tape from which will be the feeds um, for the lights that are in the in the uh, fire appliance bay and in the two rooms above it that needs um, those have got resistors already attached so that will just be straight from the 12 volt power bus that I have for the lights the lights at the front of the building, these ones, um, do not have resistors on, but I have a unit which I showed a little while ago, and I'll put a link in here um, to the, uh, uh, to the, it's an eBay purchase, but uh, I was put onto it by uh, Mark Island, I think. Um, and so that needs a separate feed straight from the unit that converts 12 volts to three volts to feed those, those lamps. Uh, and they will be attached uh, here and here, and the feed will come down the centre. And that will be uh, using these plugs. I'll put up a picture at this point, which shows a hole that I've gouged, which will sit under this base. So all the wiring will have space to sit underneath, but I only need to run two sets of wires below, uh, one into the lighting bus and one into the, um, the unit. Uh, and these are the plugs which I've used before. Uh, so that will allow me to detach this from the layout in, in the event that I need to do that and do any remedial work as and when. So that's where we've got to so far. The next thing for me to do uh, is to go and make all that sort of stuff happen, uh, which I'll go off and do. Uh, and I'll come back, I think, when, when I've finished all of this work. Um, I'm, I'm going to landscape the base a bit more uh, but I, I don't expect to get all that finished before I want to bring the video to an end because it's getting a little bit long. Uh, and I would like to do something other than build the fire station. Uh, and the landscaping of this can be done at the time when I'm putting everything else around it because it will need to fit in. Uh, the only other thing I've got to build is the um, training tower. Uh, but that I think I will do as a separate build uh, and add it to this once I've... Uh, once I'm, I'm doing more of the scenic work. So I'll come back in just a moment and hopefully we will have the finished fire station sat on its base with the lights on.
Well, here we are with the uh, fire station completed uh, and sitting on the layout. The lights are all on, bar one, which I'll show you in just a moment. I'm just going to zoom you in a little so you can see the fire station more clearly. Um, the one that's not on, you'll notice on the right hand side, one of the front lamps, it just won't work. It's definitely not working. I thought it might be some problems with um, the connection, so I've, I've cut the wires off and tried them again. And it's definitely a problem with the lamp because when I try to connect it up, other lights on the layout dim. So I've ordered uh, a replacement. And of course, because of the way I've built this, it will be a very easy matter to lift the thing off its base uh, and um, replace that lamp and get it all back down again without uh, too much in the way of, of major work. But I'm really very pleased with the way this has come out. Um, I'm quite astonished at, uh, uh, at, the, at the danger of being immodest at really how good it looks. It's exactly the kind of Art Deco fire station that I wanted. Um, I haven't uh, yet received, partly because it's been New Year, this isn't a criticism, the scale model scenery lettering to um, put fire station on the top. Uh, again, I hope to have that in time to be able to um, have that done the next next time but this is substantially complete now uh, apart from replacing that lamp and getting the words fire station at, at the top of the building uh, and as you can see with the um, uh, with the fire engines on it it really looks very good um, at this stage if I can get it to work I'll try and take some uh, shots using the um, uh, gimbal um, so you can get a, a closer look at it uh, but everything has come out as I really wanted it to do. Heaven knows how many hours I've spent on this. I would guess about 20, all told. And I've learnt a great deal in terms of scratch building and um, construction uh, in putting this together. So it may embolden me to do uh, some rather more adventurous buildings for the future. But that really brings this video to an end, which I think is probably running now at around 22, 23 minutes, which is long enough. Um, thank you. Uh, to all my new subscribers, had more new subscribers since the last uh, video. Uh, and if you've liked this video, please do give it a like. And if you've got any comments, please do put them uh, below. I really enjoy getting the comments and responding to them. Um, and until I uh, speak to you again uh, in about a fortnight's time, bye bye. Mm -hmm.